Ellie's House is an organization with the goal of helping to get women out of human trafficking in Detroit. We won't share any detailed information about any of uh, who Ellie's House helps, uh, just because it is still a very uh, dangerous thing what they do and uh, it's a very real situation. I worked at a nonprofit in the city of Detroit and during that time I had a teen girl who ran away. Um, she was gone for four days before her mom reported her missing, which is pretty typical. And um, she was approached by a pimp within 24 hours of being out on the street. And the only thing that prevented her from working um, in, the, in the trafficking industry was a five minute conversation her and I had had about what trafficking looked like. And so um, I was able to get her to go back home and we were able to sit and talk and work through conflict with her mom. But what I was learning is that there's just so much poverty and so much dysfunction in family homes um, that girls were just running away. And once they leave their house, they were being approached by men who wanted them to sell themselves for sex. I think there's a misconception that um, girls actually want to do this job, that it's their free choice to do that. I have yet to talk to one girl on the streets um, that says this is her lifelong goal and dream. That is not how it works. Um, the other misconception is that they all live in poverty or they come from some type of dysfunctional home. Um, we have a girl on the street from Rochester right now that we've been talking to for almost two years and she was 17 when she came out on the street. She had an argument with her mom, left out through the window in the middle of the night and is on the street. In the first three months, you're basically just learning how to live in community with someone. You're just learning how to get up on time in the morning, set an alarm clock, make breakfast for yourself. You're doing a lot of mental health appointments, a lot of doctor's appointments. We're trying to get your documents back if you don't have your driver's license. Um, then the next three months after that, we help you if you want to get your GED or you want to start talking about what your goals and dreams are for the future. Um, and then after the end of the two years, our goal is that you would have a job and have saved up money. So we provide a stipend every two weeks so that they have money that they can learn how to save and spend and give. And um, that you would have enough money saved up to get your own housing and you would have your own job and be self-sufficient. We're talking about women that have been on the street. Um, some of them don't even know how to boil water. And that seems foreign to us because we boil water every day, but they don't have a stove. They're living in abandoned houses with no electricity or no water. They don't have a bed to learn how to make a bed. They don't have um, the resources that we do on an everyday basis. The biggest challenge in the human trafficking world is just not enough bed space. There's just not enough facilities. Um, I get calls all the time, is there a bed available, is there a bed available? And so we really need to create more bed space, but in order to do that we need more money. We need Athens kids to come paint <laughs> and put down some kind of flooring because what we want to use this for is office space and here and then this just kind of like a conference area space where we can do group therapy, um, where girls can get together in just a different area of the house. So we want to have a couch up here and a table and um, just kind of a comfy little space. I would love to have some Athens kids come in. I've actually talked to a couple about teaching ukulele. Like what is your gift or your talent that you would want to share with somebody? Because a lot of these girls have never even tried an instrument or they've never tried to sew or anything like that. So things like that would be a big value to our girls. Would love to see that ongoing relationship um, continue even after Charity Week because a lot of what we do requires youth to come in and help us to do it. It was kind of set up that way. We're like 14 miles or so from Troy Athens, so it is happening in our backyard. Um, it's, it's really prevalent down here because you can get away with it a lot easier, and so a lot of the people that are coming here are coming from the suburb. Our outreach area is actually one of the highest prostitution drug areas in the city of Detroit. 